Hey folks, welcome to episode 10. Okay, so to mark the 10th episode here of this little series, I thought I'd do something a bit different and a bit special. Uh, I wanted to introduce you to the newest addition to my guitar collection. A few of you have actually asked for this in the past. So hopefully this is a good way to kickstart this. Yesterday was a new guitar day for me and I wanted to announce it <laughs> in this little video. Um, went up to the shop and collected this guitar yesterday and it's a real, real special one for me. I thought you'd probably like to get a little bit of insight into it. So, this is my first ever Gibson ES-335 guitar, or semi-hollow Gibson guitar at all, in fact. And it's a real special one. This guitar came in last week to the shop, um, and, you know, several times, in fact, I've had the fortune to play these ES-335, specifically these 64 cherry red ones, when they've come through the shop doors. I get to play them, and every time I've had to say, not this time. This isn't the time for me, this isn't the one for me. This guitar is going to go on to someone else who's going to absolutely adore it and cherish it, I'm sure. Um, but this time, I just couldn't let this one go. This was such an amazing guitar. And as you'll have heard in the intro there, this really does everything that I could possibly want a 335 to do anyway. It has that real sweet mellow voice, it has that really great barky, screamy, mid-rangey thing as well. It's got it all going on and um, so you're going to be seeing this guitar a lot more on this channel in the future, I think. But today's just a little bit of an introduction. And uh, I do just want to take a moment as well, as I said uh, in previous videos, to thank you all for your comments and questions that I get, particularly the ones in, in the case of today's video that I'm responding to, which are about my collection. So I will be um, making sure I feature a little bit more gear talk in the future, as you people seem to be asking for that. You seem to like that. So anyway, here we go with the, with this ES-335 today, and a little, uh, you know, a little introduction to, as to why this guitar is the one for me. Um, you know, as I said, I've never owned a 335 before, I've always kind of waited for the right one to come along. And in my mind, the 64 Cherry Red has always been the pivotal spec for me, whether it's the Eric Clapton Association, uh, or guys, I suppose, that have been inspired by that association, like John Mayer. Joe Bonamassa, any players that basically, most players that play a 335, that are my, some of my favourite players, they usually play a 64. And it just happens to be coincidence like that. And whenever I've played them, the 64 has always been the tone that I've liked the most. I think it's got a little bit more of a strong mid-range. Maybe it's because the neck is slightly smaller than the late 50s ones. The pickups are voiced differently, but when they went from the PAFs to the patent pending or whatever it was, in the history of this guitar, you know, certain spec changes over the years, the nylon saddles as well. All these little things basically add up to make this the perfect 335, in my opinion. And this is a particularly great example of this, uh, this spec, and you'll notice that this, this particular guitar is quite a dark colour as well, it's quite a dark cherry. Which again, is something I really loved. Uh, a lot of the time you see these guitars, they're a little bit too bright, uh, a little bit too kind of vibrant red and of any of the vintage guitars I've ever seen they'd always faded a little bit like this one so when I, when I opened the case and when I got to play this guitar for the first time last week it really just struck me that okay this is actually probably the closest I'm going to get to an original without spending three four five times the cost whatever and it's proven to be a great great purchase so far this is my first day with it really I went and picked it up yesterday as I said and um, just loving it. Just having a great little play today through a couple of amps, in fact. I've plugged two amps in to celebrate this momentous occasion. I've got the Sir Badger 35, as well as the Mesa Fillmore 50 down there, so it's sounding good in the room. And I wanted to put that little loop together just to kind of signify how versatile this guitar can be. As I said, it can scream, it can also have a really, really sweet quality. And um, even already, I can very quickly see this guitar is on its way to becoming my go-to instrument, my favourite instrument, and uh, I'm sure that will, you know, we'll see, we'll see how things pan out, but you're going to be seeing this guitar in a lot more videos in the future. Anyway, so uh, that was quite a driven sound that I had right there, but let me back it up a little bit. I'm going to show you that just the clean tone into the two amps, and I'll show you some of the magic that this guitar has got. Here's both pickups.
has all three pickup options there, and the balance of the three is just perfect to me. Um, you know, the voicing all the way from the neck down to the bridge, every little transition just makes perfect sense tonally. And as I talked about in a previous video, one of my favorite things to do with Gibson guitars is to use the middle position with the bridge volume on 10 and the neck around six. And it rounds it off, it makes it a little bit smoother. And on this guitar, it just sounds perfect for that too. <laughs> I was talking about. And that just means that even on a cleaner sound like that, the guitar still really speaks. Uh, it's got quite a lot of sustain, it's got a lot of kind of presence in its tone, so I think this is going to cut through any mix I could possibly hope to put it in. Now, with a little bit of gain. do the Clapton thing and um, you know just all the kind of you know standard tech talk aside about guitars because we all we all love talking about guitars and sort of the, the components that go into them and what makes them what they are and stuff like that but ultimately it just it's about how an instrument makes you feel when you pick it up and not necessarily the tone that it gives you but the tone that it allows you to put forth if that makes sense so it's kind of you know about establishing that two-way relationship so that you can express the voice that you want to express in the most direct and dynamic way. And of course that sounds incredibly cheesy. But what I mean by that is this guitar just allows you to kind of go anywhere, even with the volumes up full. <laughs> say no more I think I'm really really pleased with this guitar and um, just wanted to share it with you today uh, to round this episode off I just want to say a big thank you for even letting me get this far to episode 10 I really appreciate all the support and all the comments that I've had it's been really really great it's been really interesting to learn about some of the stuff that you guys are interested in hearing from me as well and um, I really take a lot of um, 
you know, get a lot of benefit out of the questions that you give. So please feel free to comment below with any further questions that you've got. Next episode I'll get back on track with a little bit more of a QA and a type, type of a thing as I normally do. But today is about this special guitar. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to episode 11 and um, that will be coming very soon. I look forward to getting into that one with you. Keep the questions coming in. Take good care of yourselves, guys and gals, and I'll see you next time. All right, have a good day.